Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today we're gonna do a little update video. Now about a week ago I made a video in regards to The Completionist and a possible charity situation where $655,000 has not been donated to as of today. Now as of me filming this video right now, there has been no actual statement from The Completionist from uh, you know anybody associated with the Open Hand Foundation. It's been almost a week, and let's just say it's a little bit irregular, but not really. Let me get into exactly what it is. So to give you a recap of the situation, me and Carl Jobst looked into the Open Hand Foundation, specifically their IRS tax filings, and we came to a finding, a very large discrepancy, where zero dollars was donated to charities, despite statements being made throughout the year's various IndyLand fundraising drives. And that raises money for dementia research and treatment for organizations all over the world. Uh, we're soon going to be partnering up with the Alzheimer's Association, uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco, and we're kind of one of their main, um, their main funding uh, support partners uh, going into all of this. An event that was ran by Gerard, the completionist, where money was raised by fans, by industry veterans, by big companies, small and large donations, and unfortunately, none of it seemed to actually make its way towards any of these charities, the benefactors that the Open Hand Foundation listed on their website, or the few uh, organizations that Gerard had explicitly mentioned in his various IndyLand streams. So to give you an idea of it, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you an update of exactly what's happened, some of the new findings, and a bit of a response to some of the criticism me and Carl had received in our initial videos that dropped about a week ago. So to give you an idea, I'm going to flashbang you with a few uh, quotes from individuals that were a little bit angry, a little wilded out that me and Carl looked into this in the first place. One of them is from Pro Jared. You might recognize Pro Jared from his own controversy several years ago, but Jared decided to butt into this and provide his logical sage advice. Pro Jared says, this is horseshit. They're both making a lot of assumptions and accusations without being able to actually prove anything. Yeah, uh, the problem with that, Pro Jared, is we looked at publicly filed statements and documents from the Internal Revenue Service of the United States. Also, we had Gerard on a call. But see, Pro Jared wouldn't know that because he never watched the videos. In this statement, he says, almost like they're presenting the worst and trying to get views off of it. Dog, I am a larger channel than The Completionist. Uh, if anything, I'm fine getting views no matter what I upload. They didn't bother trying to reach out to Gerard about it. No due diligence. If Pro Jared stopped playing RPGs and watched my video for at least 10 minutes, he would realize that yes, I am in fact talking to Gerard The Completionist. One of the most important parts about this story was the call we had with the completionist and getting Gerard's side of this story. Now here I want to answer two questions. Question number one, why did we look into this in the first place? There was a few people that asked in my mentions on the YouTube comments for that video and generally all over Reddit as to why me and Carl even looked into this charity in the first place. To give you the most uh, the baseline answer here, Carl was tipped off about it, Carl looped me into the situation, and that's why we looked in. On my channel, you can email me, you can hit me up on Twitter DMs, and give me a tip off for any weird, shady shenanigan you find in YouTube. Normally, I look through almost all of them, and most of them aren't really worth looking into because it's usually just a jilted fan. When Carl looped me in about The Completionist, a YouTuber that I respected, we looked into the IRS filings, and the reason we covered this video is once we found these massive discrepancies, it was no longer a matter of let's make this video for, again, content. It's make this video out of a sake of ethical concern. So again, that's the very simple answer to that first question. The other question that was basically being asked around is, did you catch uh, Gerard off the call? How did you even organize this call to begin with? And for our record's sake, I want to show you guys that we did our best diligence in this. Now, once Carl had sent his letter out to Open Hand Foundation, with his first and last name, clearly the red alerts were sent up all over the Open Hand Foundation, the completionist, and Gerard's family. They knew that Carl was looking into it. Now, on November 10th, 2023, I had hit up Gerard and asked him, Hey man, this is over Twitter DMs, I was wondering if you'd be free for a call today. We got tipped off about a discrepancy with your guys' charity, Open Hand Foundation. Just wanted to run some of the public documents with you and get your side of the story, doing due diligence here. 
Now, Gerard responded to me a couple hours later and said, yeah, man, of course. I figured this was gonna come up sooner rather than later, and that something huge was coming. It's been building the last couple of days, obviously when Carl had sent his inquiry and they had their back and forth with Jacques. I'm in the middle of meeting f meetings for the next hour or so. Would you give me a couple hours? So obviously I realized at this point, maybe this was never gonna happen. Clearly, when I heard the words, they're in the middle of meetings, I thought that Gerard was probably talking to a lawyer. And lawyers will tell you to shut the fuck up no matter what. So at this moment in time, I kind of gave up and didn't really think that I was going to get any response. Of course, Gerard gave me his Discord information. And I said, okay, sweet. I sent you a request. Let me know when you're good to call. I need a couple hours here myself too. I was stuck in the office myself, so again... There was no catching anybody off guard. He knew what the call was about, and he had several hours to prepare with his team to give us a proper, logical, thought-out answer. So obviously, later that evening, you listened to the call that we obviously played on our videos. So again, that answers the second question as well. I saw a few people talking about this and saying that maybe we caught him off guard and he didn't know anything. He had a few hours to prepare. He had a whole meeting with his team, and that's pretty much how it came out to. The happenings of that call played out the way that they did, of course, after preparation. Again, I didn't expect this call to happen because I thought lawyers would come in. Now, a bit of the other criticism that we had over here was when Dexerto, unfortunately, made a pretty damning headline. So, Dexerto, on the day of us releasing the video, said, YouTuber The Completionist is being called out for allegedly pocketing charity funds. Under this post from Dexerto was mine and Carl's videos. Now, nowhere in our videos did we ever say that the money was being pocketed. The money just existed in the bank accounts for the charity as according to the filings. And clearly, according to the filings, zero dollars was donated into these charities. So again, nothing that me and Carl said was, I guess, factually incorrect according to the statements. Dexerto made a pretty shitty headline. Now, in Dexerto's credit, they removed this, amended it, and even one of their heads contacted me and told me they fucked up. So again, I gotta give them some level of respect where respect is due. But again, this tainted the well pretty bad. So again, other creator says, I didn't watch the full videos of accusations, but like, why is this stuff even public? Because the tax filings are public, you idiot. Like, they'd, they'd even try talking to him first. Again, why even throw your fucking hat into the ring if you haven't watched the videos? If you watched 10 minutes, not even the whole video, you would realize that yes, I did my due diligence. Me and Carl did. So again, another creator says, wild drama. Didn't expect to get involved in one. Uh, this isn't drama. What other creator says, this is unethical, immoral, and potentially illegal activity. That's not drama. See, this is an adult responding. So again, here's another genius. It looks like a couple of YouTubers looking to gain some sort of fame. Bro, my channel is magnitudes larger. Why, what fame am I looking for? Again, this isn't a dick measuring contest. It's just simply destroying your fallacy. There have been several times when charitable money was donated to the wrong organization, and they did move it to something else. I trust Gerard. Again, this wouldn't be a story had these statements been properly made. My personal favorite is incredibly depressing that over the last few years, we've ping-ponged from no YouTuber has ever held accountable ever to knockoff Keemstar found some why weird paperwork. Better cancel Gerard's entire bloodline. Yeah, I guess to this idiot that weird paperwork is an actual IRS filing. Again, please enter the real world. Please become a fucking adult. That's all I ask, okay? Simple as put out. Now I'm gonna to respond to some pretty accurate criticism. This was posted by an account known as The Little Wooly. Now this was shared around a lot and this is actually the account of an individual that claims to work as an accountant for a nonprofit 501c3 organization for 7.5 years now, with I guess an additional two years in the accounting profession. I'm not here to you know disprove or, or question anybody's credentials. I'm gonna take his word for it, okay? It is what it is. So he says he looks at the situation, he says the Open Hand Foundation is a small family-run foundation, and while having 600,000 in the bank is quite a bit of money, in reality, it's a tiny amount in the grand scheme of things. So while yes, they should have probably sent the money off to be used for research after years of collecting the money, it seems to me based on Gerard was saying in the videos that not only were they wanting to find the right organization to give the money to, that they wanted to make sure the money is actually used for dementia research. 
which, yes, Gerard said they wanted to, I guess, evaluate the right, you know, partner. And that's even what they wrote in their statement. They wanted to make sure their money was actually sent to the right place. Had this been proper public knowledge on the IndieLand website, the Open Hand Foundation website, and those streams, this wouldn't even be a video. Had people just known their money was being stockpiled rather than, you know, being told that, yes, we're raising money for dementia research and we're working with so, so, and so. So again, the response here is, this is where I have a few issues with Mudahar's video. Why not just donate it? Organizations ask for as little as $35. Yes, I said that. So this person enlightens, and this is actually good, good information. For a general unrestricted donation, from the sounds of it, Open Hand would really like the money to be focused on a specific purpose. Or as we would say, they want their donation to be restricted. Now for a smaller nonprofit like where I work, we take in a lot of small amounts to be used for restricted causes, such as use in a specific program to buy certain items. Larger national or multinational organizations like the Alzheimer's Association are too big to track those tiny donations. As Gerard says, the money would go to waste. And if you want your money to not just go into the hands of a CEO or other administrative costs, you want to see some tracking of your money going to work for the desired cause. So he also says you can't pin the money still being there on Gerard. He is only one vote in a foundation with other members of his family. That is true. But we'll get to this in a little bit. So yes, it's true. I learned about unrestricted and restricted donations. Now, according to Investopedia, restricted donations, uh, when a donor determines, typically fund designation is specified in writing in what is termed the gift instrument. Foundations that provide restricted funds often describe how they want their money allocated when they distribute the award. Nonprofit organizations can, av can avoid confusion about how they intend to spend the donor's fund by offering a choice of designation. A cancer research nonprofit, for instance, could give donors a choice to allocate their funds to any one of breast, skin, or brain cancer clinical trials. So again, while this could very much be true, let's go further into this actual uh, breakdown. Why wouldn't they just donate, you know, XXX instead of just 35? Come on, Mudahar! Can't you think of any organization, nonprofit and or for profit that would refuse to make your money their money? They'll gladly take your 35 bucks and use it how they see fit, which may be to add it to the CEO salary, which is fine, right? Like, obviously I get it. They want to build a large enough money where they can restrict it and make sure that a CEO doesn't get it. But again, this should have been relayed. So again, he also comes up and tells us about the IRS filings where he discusses that the signatures, Carl actually focused how some filings didn't have signatures. And I would have to imagine personally, my involvement with the IRS, the CRA, and all these organizations, electronic signatures sometimes don't show up in public filings. I don't know if it's a privacy complaint or something of that nature, but that's maybe the only logical response I can think about it. If you don't have a signature, I think that's like an immediate audit, okay? But again, I'm not a CPA. So again, please make sure to talk to a CPA. This is just what I've heard relayed from accountants that I've spoken to. The filings for open hand are very bare bones, but you should blame that on the CPA firm that made them. They could have easily broken the expenses down to specifics, but because of how small open hands is and how little in donations they bring in on a yearly basis, there's probably no regulation saying that the firm had to get specific. If the government wanted to look into this, I'm sure all the paperwork for things like lawyer fees, accounting fees, filing fees, insurance, costs, etc., are there. And the CPA firm has probably seen all of them. So again, uh, yeah, he says the drama seems a bit overblown. What Little Wooly fails to exactly go into it is how Gerard claimed in our own interview that he had all this money, right, sitting in the account, and he knew about this since at least 2022. In the video, he said 2021, but I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Gerard, and I'm just going to let you listen and say that he mentioned 2022. So Irregardless, I'm going to show you a clip after you heard this call once again that doesn't really make it better. I knew it was sitting there mm -hmm. at a certain point, and that's what me made me proactively go about it. Like, Do you know when I that point was? 20... I was made aware in 2021 when the, the, the money hadn't moved yet. Okay. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's what I got personally involved to move it. And did anyone... 2021, last year, 2022... Yeah, did anyone tell you that the, the, the money was going somewhere before then? Were you being misled? 
No. No, no, no. No one told me anything. I was I assumed that it was all going to a charity, and I I assumed incorrectly. So now that Gerard has said that he was notified about this since like I guess 2021, 2022. Listen to this podcast that Gerard was on November 4th, 2023, this year. So this is the Friends Per Second podcast, episode 33. This is up on Skillup's channel. I want to also stress for the record, none of these people have anything to do with this. They actually made a really good response to this situation in their most recent podcast episode. But I'm going to play this clip, and it's pretty damning. Listen to this. Do our own version of that every year and kind of make it a cool celebration of of games and raise money for a, you know charity and so he was like i wish we had a charity that we could donate to and i was like oh i i run my own charity called the open hand foundation and all the money that we aggregate i mean i started it when i was a young a young boy with my dad in honor of my mom who had dementia and so uh we just every year we try and raise as much money as possible and then we go work with you know alzheimer association of america university of san francisco um association for ftd which is what my mom had ftd so we've like worked with big and small organizations across the board and he was like it'd be really cool if we did a show all about raising money for people who are making huge headways in in dementia research and prevention and all that stuff. And I said, yeah, I'd love to. We have the organization to do it. We just, you know, need to come up with a theme. And so I'm I literally am am, am about to, like, donate all this money today. And, and, and prior to that earlier this week and the week before. And I've just been sitting here crippled trying to figure out the best way to handle this, because I felt like if I donated the money the minute you guys emailed me, It'd be a situation of, well, he's trying to hide it and he's admitting guilt by doing that. And I never felt that way, but I understand completely that you guys could easily argue that. And it would just make me look more like a scumbag. And, um, you know, I I just wanted, you know, I, I want to do right by you guys and what you think. When you guys got the email and I said, please tell us about benefactors, that was genuine because I haven't found a benefactor that I'm completely happy with. And... I want to make sure that this money goes to a good cause in honor of my mom. And I'm upset that the conversations I've had haven't gone the way that I wanted. And I'm willing at this point to just donate the money to whoever I want it to go in the right spot. Now, again, I played that clip for all context. Okay. I extended that to make sure that people could realize that in this, he mentions specific charity names. Now, remember back to the definition of charity fraud that we talked about. It's pretty up when behind the scenes you're telling us that you're still evaluating charities you're asking us which charities to work with while conversely actually mentioning them by name publicly in live streams less than 14 days old at this point ladies and gentlemen this gets into some serious false statements and again i could imagine what the government of the united states or the state of california would think about this situation again This is very, very, very damning shit to witness. And again, that call Gerard had with us probably was one of the dumbest decisions he could have made because in that call, he confirmed with us that the money was in the account. And again, we took his word for it. But um, the important thing is that all the money is still in the account. None of it's spent erroneously. It's all above board. Like it's not, it's not hiding in a Cayman account or anything like that. Again, I am believing Gerard at his word at that time, and I'm looking at the tax filings. If they claim to have $655,000 in an account, then just donate it. The fact that these guys have not made a statement yet, and again, I get it, this is an issue of criminality. Obviously, lawyers are going to be vetting everything that you say. But I think when you tell me and Carl that you have the money sitting in the account, then that's, you should at least show a bank statement. Show a bank statement as soon as you can that verifies the account is still, you know, filled with that cash and then donate it, right? What's really f***ed up in this situation is even if the account has that money, over the years, through inflation, it has lost its buying power. And because of that, that money has less of an effect than had it been donated in the years that it was raised. That's the real problem with the situation. It's not even just that the money is sitting there. It's that as it continues to sit there, from all we know, It's just losing its value. Again, the important question is, can we even see if the money is still in the account? All we have is to go off of Gerard's words. 
which unfortunately, because of his statements, he is not a truthful individual as far as my opinion is considered. Beyond that, according to their tax filings, yes, I'm going to look at them and say they probably have the money in the account, but the tax filing is not a bank statement. So we don't even know yet, all right? And I think that's kind of safe to say. Right now, the question is, is the money there? If it's there and show people that yes, the money is there, we're going to be doing an accurate accounting and just donate it to the parties that we claim to be donating to. At the end of the day, that's really the best possible ending to this scenario. Look, like I said in my previous video, at best, this is severely gross negligence. And even then, that doesn't protect you criminally. And at worst, if the money isn't there, we are getting into a serious, illegal situation. And I kind of wish that the people who were complaining about the story would have actually seen this, right? Again, one of the responses was, again, to that little woolly post, this is where my mind is at. Considering Gerard is always having his ass out for communities, charities, and developers, where the others two, me and Carl, are just drama sensationalist YouTubers. Again, I'm sorry that your brain cells are so cooked that you think possible criminal action is just drama, when it's really not. This is a matter of ethics. This is a matter of people being defrauded, potentially, allegedly, and it should be rectified as soon as possible. Even Little Wooly said, yes, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit on some of the more common responses. They held the money for 10 years. Agree, not a good look. Would have been better to publicly disclose that info. That's literally what me and Carl said. As I said in the replies, name dropping orgs is a bit weird when the money hasn't exchanged hands. Although I hope my guess of large restricted donations is what is actually being planned. Again, this is just him being hopeful that these are large restricted donations. And again, the original post is just my guess based on my professional experience and what I've seen or heard in these videos. I could be completely wrong, but I think hope I'm onto something. Again, Little Wooly is also speculating in the situation and yeah, I appreciate his actual response into the situation. I do wish that he also addressed those misleading statements. Now, even Gerard said he has a paper trail of all of his communication with these organizations, which I would love to see. I hope these get published in due time. Obviously, lawyers are going to have to check all of his statements before they ever go live. So at the behest of making this video longer than previous, I looked further into the Open Hand Foundation, and obviously, there was another event that was running the situation. PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge, which is a golf challenge that, of course, these guys were running for quite a long time. Now, this entire, like, PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge had its own set of sponsorships. So as a company, you could give them up to $10,000 to get your company name featured throughout this golf tournament. There are photos from their actual golf tournament which showcases that some brands like Monster Energies, Rye's Coca-Cola Bottling, Keurig Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, Cormark, a lot of these big brands are showing up in this situation. And again, even their own brand, also PBD West, shows up as well. So again, with these big brands like First Citizen Bank, I really hope they realize what they're getting into, where their money is going to. Because according to their own website right here, you write a check to the Open Hand Foundation. So alongside IndyLand, it's this golf tournament that's also raising money as well. So there are a lot of parties that deserve actual answers that go beyond just gaming. The PBD West myself, this company, and in their success page, what I found really hilarious here was uh, apparently they worked with Monster Energy, right? Now off the top, this doesn't seem like a massive deal, but if you look closely, they mentioned this happened in 1998. What's insane about Monster Energy is it was actually introduced in April 18, 2002. And again, you can look at this by their trademark details. For instance, right here, you can see according to Monster Energy, their first use in commerce date was literally 2002. Um, I think it was uh, April of 18th April of that year. So they could have waited two days to make it based, but generally the idea here is, uh, again, it's hard to believe if they partnered with a company uh, literally before, I guess, they were ever really known to the public. Maybe they had a time machine. But the more I looked into it, the weirder this website got. But again, this is not necessarily pertinent to the charity. It's just one of these things that is stuck into my head, again, as I looked into it.
So one weird discrepancy we also found recently was on the Alzheimer's Association. They actually had a blog that was talking about the completionist and how he shared the story of his mom and this foundation. And its blog post has actually just been removed. All right, literally, if you take the actual link off of Wayback Machine, put it into a web browser, you'll find out that, yeah, apparently even these charities are cutting their connections or ties publicly on their blogs, which doesn't really bode well. So I went further into the situation and looked into the state of California's Department of Justice uh, charity lookup. So again, you can do this for yourself. Going to this link, rct.doj.california.gov, verification web search.aspx, facility equals Y. Yes, I'm gonna spell the whole thing out. So even the 11 year olds who were criticizing our video initially can go down this breadcrumb trail with us, okay? Yes, I am gonna be sassy as now in this situation, you can type the organization as Open Hand Foundation, and you'll find three versions of Open Hand. We're gonna go to the one that's currently registered. So opening that one up, it'll give you details of this organization. And it'll also give you their various documents as well. Inside their documents, I looked through the founding papers, and in the founding papers, it was actually pretty noticeable where we found out in page 12, where it actually talks about, you know, uh, who's in the leadership. So for instance, Kaylee Khalil, the director, the only one to get, I guess, $1,000 in compensation, which again, isn't that much. I assume that's for a formality's sake. So inside here, it says Magdalene Ibrahim plans to marry Charles Khalil. So I assume Magdalene is the new wife of Charles, obviously, as the statement has written. And in this, you can see that Gerard, Kelly, Magdalene, Jacques, Layla, Charles are listed as basically the directors of this operation. So in contrast to the original IRS documents, the California versions showcase they actually do work hours. So Gerard works 40 hours on this. And here, Gerard is providing marketing and promotion, which obviously he's doing through IndieLand. And he's also evaluating charities to donate to and consider fundraising activities. So according to this filing, Gerard is taking an active approach in looking for charities as well too. And being a director, he obviously has to know what's going on in this organization. See, he was told that the money was still sitting in the account, but that's me being very charitable. Again, I run businesses too. And being the director of my businesses, I know pretty much generally what's going on in all of them. I have to, legally I need to. But the point I'm trying to make is being the director of an organization, a charity that is built on your dead mother's name, you should have at least a rough idea of what's going on. You can't just throw money into it and just pretend that it's gone. Take your sibling's word for it, okay? You should probably be looking into it at least every year as you're filing your taxes. I get that Gerard is a busy guy, I'm a busy guy too, but you all take time out of your day during tax season to check all of your, to, 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 to dot your I's and cross your T's. So of course, some people have more control over this, like Magdalene Ibrahim, who apparently has 200 average hours worked at the company, which again, annually, that's not much at all, but they're the treasurer management and administration. So again, this seems like the person that has the most control over this operation. And I guess by definition, Charles. But Gerard should have some say, especially given that he is the face of this operation, especially through IndieLand. One thing that I also looked through with their California filings that I guess I want to mention is, while in their uh, actual 2022 filings, they mention how their book value is $655,520. Now, some people have said, could they have been skimming off interest? Again, this is in a cash non-interest bearing line which means that they don't have a savings account. They literally had no investments, no savings to offset the loss that they would get from inflation. Again, some charities do it, but this isn't really that much money for them to be thinking about investments, at least from my personal perspective. Now, in this statement, they said that the fair market value was $0. Dog, how can you have $655,000 in, in US month currency and then say the fair market value is zero. That makes no sense. Again, the way that this is filed, I feel like the accountant over here just did not give a shit. Now, one of the things that I wanted to make a point of this is, do you want justice to be delivered? So I'm going to teach you guys how to report this properly. Now, obviously the IRS may or may not look into this. They probably might be, 
But being that they're a federal agency, maybe the money isn't into them. If you want any agency to look into this, because they're pretty much, you know, obligated to, check the state of California. Now, Gerard, the completionist, uh, the Open Hand Foundation is hosted in the state of California, which, by the way, is the strictest fucking state in the union in regards to charities. So if you want something done, please go to the oag.california.gov slash charity slash complaints, fill out form CT9, all right, print this out, write everything you need to, email it to the state of California, or click on the contacts the complaint program, enter your first last name, your organization, and tell them exactly why you think this charity should be investigated. I think it's pretty obvious by now. And with enough reports, the state of California at least has to acknowledge and start actual proceedings into investigating this charity. Again, I just care about money being donated. That's it. And I think at the end of the day, if Gerard has this money, he should prove that he has the money and donate it to the charities that he's claimed. Look, I wanted to make this video to basically address a lot of the criticisms that we got, which I think I fairly did. I wanted to look further into this situation and basically discover just the breadth of the work that Gerard was on with this charity, which I think these California documents revealed a little bit more. And also to show you that he is contradicting himself as of literally less than 14 days ago by mentioning exact organizations that I guess allegedly work with the Open Hand Foundation. Look, this is a really, really shitty situation. And the reason why I'm pressing is because I want the money donated to charities. This man told me on a call that he had all the money still in the account. So if that money is there, just prove it exists. I get it. You're behind lawyers and PR agencies. But if you have the money, I don't think it's illogical to show that you have the money and you are willing to donate it. Unless, of course, even if possessing the money after all of this, there are still some serious legal repercussions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave this where it's at. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.